BMW R75. Wojtek and I shot some footage of it almost a year ago. Due to my accident, work on motorbikes and films about them got stuck for good, but I decided to finally upload it to the channel. This is a short story of a motorbike created especially for the German army during the Second World War. Was it successful motorbike? Was it reliable? Did it make sense to produce such a complicated and expensive high-tech in wartime? To this day the BMW R75 next to the Zindab KS750 is a favorite topic of debate among enthusiasts of military motorbikes and delights them with its design solutions and the legend of the Sahara, a motorbike as if out of this world. In fact, when we compare the BMW R75 with Ali designs such as the BSA M20 or Harley WLA, we can immediately see how much the German designers and army leadership were crazy about modernity. The motorbike was very technically advanced. It had aluminum heads, OHV timing, hydraulic brakes for the rear and sidecar, and the gearbox was particularly complicated with four forward gears and one reverse, but there was a reducer for the off-road use. The reverse gear was also reduced. When it broke down it couldn't be repaired in field conditions. It required specialist repair in workshops at the back of the front. Here is a nice way to quickly unhook the trunks. Spring up and I can go with my stuff to the trench or canteen for example back, spring it up and you are done. The sidecar wheel and the rear wheel were driven by differential, which could be locked if necessary by a lever on the right side of the rear wheel. Curiously 70% of the power went to the rear wheel and 30% to the sidecar, which provided excellent handling characteristics. The motorbike's engine and air-cooled boxer had a capacity of 750cc, a compression ratio of 5.8 to 1, 26 horsepower with magnetic ignition, allowing starting without a battery. The frame was steel, bolted together. This was useful if the engine needed to be removed. Telescopic front fork with oil dumping, rigid rear suspension. All wheels were of the same design and could be swapped with each other. In the first series the motorbike had an air filter mounted low by the carburetor, but in the conditions of the Russian front this did not work. From 1942 the air filter was placed on a fuel tank under the characteristic helmet. The motorbike was even equipped with a heating system for the handlebars and sidecar to better deal with the rough Russian conditions. Anyway, at the time the R75 was nicknamed Rusland. Only after the war the name Sahara was adopted in Poland and Russia because of the sandy Dunkel Gelb paint job, but in truth some R75s actually served in North Africa. The top speed is about 95 km per hour, but importantly the motorbike is capable of 4 km per hour continuously without overheating, as much as an infantryman's march. This is the console for changing gears, road gears forwards, off-road gears backwards. If you use road mode you have 4 gears and reverse, if you use off-road mode you have 3 gears and reverse. 
To go into reverse you have to press this button. History in 1937 the Land Army Command announced a competition for a heavy sidecar motorbike for the German Army. Sindap, BMW and DKW entered the tender with the year 500 model, which was quickly dropped. It started with Sindap, who proposed a completely new, by the way, very successful motorbike, the KS750. BMW at the time only had the R12 with the sidecar on offer, but for the competition the R71 was proposed. However, the R71's flat valve engine was overheating and did not have enough power. It was therefore decided to take the subject seriously and the R75 was created, a completely new motorbike with a modern engine. In test, the Zindab KS750 performed better than the BMW R75, so the idea was Put forward the BMW should produce the Zindab KS750 motorbike in-house, to which the BMW management did not agree. Eventually both motorbikes went into production, but they had about 70% common parts. For example, wheels, rear wheel and sidecar drive, brakes, sidecar. Production of the BMW R75 went on from 1941 to 1944 and 16,500 units were produced during this time. Production of the R75 was stopped due to high manufacturing cost. After the war a number of motorbikes were built by the Soviets from captured parts and a few were made by EMW as the AVO 700. Reportedly, Adolf sent a number of Saharas to Spain, where they survived away from the front until the end of the war. I've always been curious about riding a Sahara and it just so happens that my friend Lehu acquired such a vehicle some time ago and it's in great condition. As another of my hobbies is World War II reactment and I built a silhouette of Wehrmacht Herr Private. I don't promote any political doctrines here. 1942 BMW R75, the iconic motorcycle of Second World War. I came up with an idea to ride Sahara on the local roads dressed as a Wehrmacht private for better atmosphere. The motorbike starts very easily, literally on touch. When I climb onto the saddle, the white handlebars caught my eyes at once thanks to which maneuvering in heavy terrain with a sidecar is not difficult. The motorbike engine runs extremely softly and quietly. The gears engage perfectly without rasping. The clutch works smoothly and quite lightly. It is very maneuverable off-road and you can literally roll the horns almost around its own axis. And there is plenty of power for off-road. I didn't drive it only up long, steep hills. I just didn't have one in the neighborhood, but I think it could handle the slack. I've ridden this vehicle on asphalt as well, but I think the most fun is with the BMW R75 when in charge off-road adventure. Alright, and this is it. Thanks for watching, follow Pendowski Garage on YouTube, and see you next time!